Hello students, in this video we'll discuss differential operators in relationship to vectors and dyadic tensors. Let's recall the Euclidean definition of this, that the gradient operator is given by the sum over i of d by dxi delta i hat. This is our gradient differential operator. Later, when we start discussing covariant and contravariant bases in different coordinate systems, we're going to see that this operation over here needs to have a one covariant component and one contravariant component because this thing has two covariant components and doesn't transform in the right way. So later on, we're going to see that it's going to be this differential operator times the contravariance um, basis element over here. But for the time being, this is going to be more than sufficient in order to do differential calculations on just in Cartesian coordinates. Okay, that's our gradient operator. And so now what we can do is now we can use the ideas behind dynamic tensors to figure out what the gradient of a vector field will be, right? So if V is a vector field, right? And that just means that V of X, we can say like X1, X2, X3, is going to be V1 of X1, sort of force of habit, so I write for Y, but I really mean X1, X2, X3, right? V1 of X1, X2, X3, I hat or delta one hat, right? Plus V2 of X1, X2, X3, J hat, plus V3 of X1, X2, X3, and then K hat. And of course, as I alluded to, these are really, this I hat is really delta one hat, this is really delta two hat, and this is really delta three hat. Okay, excellent. So compactly, we can write this vector field in the following form. We can write this as the sum over J of Vj. Now I'm going to suppress the of x1, x2, and x3 in the direction of delta j hat. So that's what vector fields look like. And so now I can formally do the gradients of this vector field. And so now define gradients of v is going to be this operator, the sum over i of d by dxi, d by dxi, delta i hat dot the sum over j, vj, and then delta j hat, right? And so we see over here that this is going to be equal to what? That this expression over here is exactly equal to the sum over i and j, over i and j, of partial vj, partial xi, and then delta i hat delta j hat. And so in other words, the gradient of a vector field is a dyadic tensor field, right? So this is a dyadic tensor field. Excellent. Now, one important quantity we see in fluid mechanics is this term in the Navier-Stokes equation. So as a consequence of this, let me do an example. If I was to do the vector V dot, what, single dot product, this gradient V, this is a term that appears in the Navier-Stokes equations, it's a quadratic nonlinearity, right? Is gonna be what? It's gonna be the sum over I of VI delta I hat I'm going to single dot this with the sum over j and k, the sum over j and k of v partial vj. Uh, so I want the j to be second, right? So the i is first, so I want the partial vk, and then partial xj. Then I want my i, my j first, that's a delta j hat, and then a delta k hat like so, keeping the order and the consistent. And so now this becomes a delta ij, so this is going to be just the sum over i and k, because I'm going to replace all my i's with j's, of vi, vi, and then partial vk, partial vk, partial xj, but j gets replaced with i, so it's a partial xi, partial xi, like that, is in the direction of vk, in the direction of vk over here. So this is the term that you're going to see these expressions over here, as you're summing over i and k are the terms that appear when you're looking at the Navier-Stokes equations, right? So this expression over here is a very important quantity to understand, okay? Now I can do the same sort of thing using these vector operations to talk about what it would mean to do the gradient dot a what? The gradient dot um, a dyadic tensor, for example, right? So let's do that. So if I did gradient single dot, right? That's going to be a vector field single dot tau bar bar, this would be what? This would be the sum over i of d by dxi, delta i hat, that's my gradient operator, right? And the single dot this with the sum over j and k, the sum over j and k of tau jk, delta j 
hat delta k hat is my unit dyadic tensors. And then I'm going to do these dots over here. So this is going to turn into a what? I'm going to have a delta i j. So I'm going to sum over i and k, the sum over i and k of partial tau j k. So that's going to be an i k partial x i. And then that's going to be in the direction of delta k. So delta k over there. So in order to do the dot product, the gradient dot a dyadic tensor, you're going to get a vector itself over here. And we have exactly sort of the same structure over here, just in the opposite order, right? So that's another example. What happens if we were to do the curl of these things? If I want to do the gradient curl tau bar bar, well, that would be the same thing over here. It would be the sum over i, d by dx i, delta i hat, like that, OK? And then cross the sum over j and k, tau j k, delta j hat, delta k hat, like so. And so now, of course, what we're going to get is we're going to get the sum over, let's do this very, very carefully. It's going to be the sum over i, j, k, and l now, because I'm crossing these things. I have a d tau j k d x i. Then I have a delta i cross delta j. Delta i cross delta j is going to be an epsilon i j l. And that's going to turn into a delta l hat delta k hat. So this is the gradient cross the dyadic tensor. And so yet again, this is a dyadic tensor. Dyadic tensor. Now, I can extend these operators and keep getting higher and higher dimensional things. So this gives us a good sense of how we can incorporate our knowledge of dyadic tensors onto vector fields and then onto uh, these so-called dyadic tensor fields over here. Because it's implicit in this assumption that these numbers over here, these tau jk, tau ik, are not constant. They're functions of x. So these are dyadic tensor fields. They depend on the underlying coordinates. So field means you depend on the coordinates. Now, one last thing I want to at least mention is this idea of a Hessian, right? So it's the Hessian operator. The Hessian is this operator. It's the sum over i and j of partial squared. It's the second derivative operator. And we're going to study these second derivative operators carefully in further videos because they don't transform in the way we want them to. Okay, They don't transform in a tensorial way. But how does this Hessian operator work in particular if you input like a vector field to it then? If you wanted to input a vector field, if you wanted to input a sort of a scalar function, if I did like the Hessian of w, for example, what would the hash number of a simple scalar field be? It should be the sum over i and j over i and j of partial squared w, partial x i, partial x j, and then delta i hat, delta j hat. And again, if you do the hessian of a scalar field, this becomes a dyadic tensor, right? This is a dyadic tensor. So. The whole point of this discussion over here is to illustrate that if we're doing things like Hessian operators or gradient operators or sort of convective derivative terms over here, we have or, or also gradient vector gradient fields of uh, gradients of vector fields, we can't confine ourselves exclusively to just vector fields. We have to allow ourselves to include this idea of dyadic tensor fields. And with the idea of dyadic tensor fields, we're able to basically say, well, now I have an idea of what this thing, what this object is analytically, and then I can study the analytic and different properties of these operators using the diet tools from dyadic tensor theory, using the tools from vector analysis, so we can sort of combine these things and not think of these things as some sort of really just abstract thing. They're just the natural expressions to keep track of all the indices in your problems when you're dealing with vector fields and differentials of vector fields. So very, very useful identities to think of these things, to think of differential operators of vector fields or of scalar fields as either vector fields or, or diadic tensor fields, or even if you do higher order operators, you might get into sort of tetradic tensors or triadic tensors. So keeping in mind that we want to be able to understand what dimension these things are relative to the underlying vector space, and that will help us analyze problems with great ease. Thank you very much.